everyone, it's Diane. Welcome back to my channel. If we've never met, I'm the American blogger behind the Living Abroad Lifestyle blog, We in France, so check that out if you have a minute. And if you're interested in what life is like in France for a foreigner, along with travel tips, French language, French culture stories, and all of that good stuff, be sure to hit subscribe. But today, I want to get right into it. I have a video for you on my top tips, really simple tips, on how to come across as more confident, less nervous, and less stressed when you're speaking French. If you've been there or you're there now, you're going to want to keep watching. So let's go. Okay, so I'm going to tell you my top tips for coming across as more confident in French, and these tips can work for any language. It's just my second language is French. I've been in France since 2012, so the stories on my channel are going to be about French, but they could apply to any language. And my tips are simple, and that's because one, they could apply to everyone, you could implement them right away, and two, we often forget that the simplest solutions are often the best ones. You know, when we get stressed, when we're nervous, the simplest solutions just go right out the window. So I'm keeping it simple in today's video. If you want to come across as more confident, more self-assured when you're speaking French, just keep on watching. I also want to tell you that I've been there. If you're struggling, if you just got to France, you're like, oh my gosh, I thought I was good at French. I don't understand anyone. And you're having a lot of bad days. Hang in there. That's what I can tell you that it's going to get better. The early days were tough and I know what it's like. When I came to France, I had about a low intermediate level of French, maybe somewhere around B1, but my, my written French and my reading comprehension was way, way better than oral comprehension. When I was put face to face with an actual French person beyond just a very simple conversation, I was lost. I couldn't make sense of the sounds and I, I just had a lot of trouble understanding people's responses to me. And that got better with time. But I know what it's like when you just kind of feel little and you don't want to speak up, you don't want to draw attention to yourself because you're scared you're not going to understand the person speaking back to you. But trust me, it's so much better if you put your shoulders back, stand tall, and project an air of confidence. Because like they say, fake it until you make it. And I'm not advocating that you, you, know, you fake your level of French or anything like that, but sometimes most of the time, you're better than you think. People are not judging you as harshly as you're judging yourself. And I'm speaking from experience here. So if there's anything that I could do to help you feel a little more confident, come across as more self-assured, I'm going to do that. So let me also remind you that wherever you are right now, it's good enough. Language learning is a journey. There are no shortcuts. So don't compare yourself to others. I know the temptation is there. It's so easy to see what other people are doing on social media, your friends at home. Just don't. Where you are now, in this moment, it is enough. It has to be enough because if you start doubting yourself and comparing and looking at what this one's doing, you're going to feel bad about yourself and that bad energy, those bad feelings, they're not going to help propel you forward to where you want to go. So whatever you do, Try your darndest to just stay focused on where you are, what you're doing, and know that even if you're having a hard time, if you don't feel like you're progressing, you are. Even if you kind of backslide before you, you get on to the next feat that you're trying to accomplish and, and you nail that subjonctif or that uh, conditionnel, you know, you're getting better. My first tip is to speak up. So in your native language, if you're speaking and someone says, sorry, what was that? You repeat it, no problem. But in your second language, when someone says, sorry, what? You don't think, oh, they have a hearing problem. Oh, they didn't hear me. You think, oh my God, was it my accent? Oh, did I not pronounce that correctly? Oh God, they want me to repeat it. And you know, most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, the person's head was somewhere else. They just didn't hear you. And they're asking you to repeat yourself because they didn't hear you, but we second guess ourselves and think it's us when a lot of times it's not. So to avoid that, what you need to do is just speak up the first time. And yes, that means people are going to hear you. They're going to hear your accent from the back of the line at the boulangerie. They're going to hear that you're not French, but who cares? Who cares? At least you're projecting your voice and you're not coming across as the meek little foreigner that is no, has no clue what she's doing. So just the difference between this, Oui, bonjour, uh, je suis uh, américaine, j'habite en France depuis 2012. Uh, uh. You know, where you're kind of looking down, you're kind of talking quietly. You, you look like someone that 
doesn't have any confidence. And the thing is, even people with confidence, when they're learning a second language, in their second language, that confidence goes right down. So it's like they're a different person and that's not good. So even if you're not normally an authoritative speaker, you don't speak up, you're shy, you don't like to make eye contact, even if that's not your norm, I'm urging you to try it when you're speaking French. So when you go into that, that boulangerie to order your baguette or you know, you're introducing yourself, consider this as the alternative. Bonjour, uh, une baguette s'il vous plaît, or oui, uh, je m'appelle Diane, je suis américaine, enchantée, uh, j'habite en France depuis 2012. You know, you, you're speaking up, you're looking at the person, you're speaking authoritatively, you're not yelling, but you are speaking with confidence, with a bit of volume to your voice, just so you're sure that the person is hearing you. And for me, that's really helped. I come across as, oh, she has a good tone to her voice. Oh, you can hear her, you know, I, I often, talk a lot to the elderly uh, when I'm out with my dog and just with the time difference with my work and things like that, I'm out during the day. And I talk to people who are hard of hearing. And after a few months, people have said, oh, thank you so much for speaking up. You know, people appreciate that. And you know, it's the sad truth that when you have an accent, people do strain a little bit. The, the expression I hate the most is when you see the eyes go, like that's going to help them. And it's automatic. You know, I don't hold it against anyone, but when people hear an accent that they don't expect, sometimes they kind of look at you and you know, they're, it's a sad truth, but they have to pay attention a little bit more to understand someone with an accent. So just speak up, make sure you're doing everything you can on your side to make sure you're understood and that you're communicating well. And that's the first step. Okay. The next one is to keep things simple. Keep your vocabulary simple, keep your word choice simple, and don't use new phrases that you're not exactly sure of the context or the pronunciation. It's just gonna convolute things. And the other thing is if you speak to someone simply in simple language, you know, you use words like sad or happy instead of elated or decimated, or, you know, you're not, you're not going for the vocabulary awards of the century. You're just trying to get your point across. If you use simple language, the person's response is going to mirror what you've just said. So I find that when I speak simply and clearly, the person's going to speak back to me simply and clearly. Whereas if you start off like you're, you know, the queen of the French language and you're busting out all your new phrasing and grammar, the person's response might be at that same level. And if you're not ready for it, you're not used to it, it might leave you feeling a little defeated when you don't know what they've just said back to you. So keep it simple and you'll surprise yourself. Next one is smile. And I have to say that French people probably don't smile quite as much as Americans. And yes, this is a generalization. I try to stay away from those. Americans are kind of known for being very smiley, almost superficially smiley, like, hi, how are you? Almost scary. Uh, I have relatives who, you know, their default is a big toothy smile and it's almost, it's almost off-putting. So my tip is to smile. And I find that French people are less superficially smiley than Americans, not in a bad way. It's just, you know, people don't automatically greet you with a big toothy grin. So my tip here is to smile again, not in an unnatural way, not in a forced way, nothing that feels out of character to who you are. But you know, if you're nervous, if you're stressed, your face might show that you might really come across as nervous and stressed. And that might put the other person on edge. I, I don't know. It's just, if you can smile, just to immediately put the other person at ease, to let them know you're trying, a warm smile is appreciated. And I feel like it breaks the tension on both sides, but a little smile does help break the ice and it goes a long way. And as I said, I came to France in 2012. So it's 2018 right now. I've been here for over six years and I use all of these tips even today. They're simple, but they're not just for beginners. So use them and let me know down in the comments what you think, what your tips are, what you have to add and how these have worked for you. All right, that wraps up this video. It's all I have for you today, but be sure to check out the link in the description box so you could head over to my blog for more information on this topic. But for now, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you back here next time. Salut.